Hey guys, Jacob here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Year 6 Season 2 PTS patch notes. This is going to be for Phase 2. We already pretty much covered Phase 1, of course, which now this is going to be Phase 2. And if you guys haven't, I did pretty much cover the Phase 1 patch notes already, uh, which is another video. If you guys want to go check that out, if you just want to read through that. Uh, but this is going to be for Phase 2. We're going to hop right into it and pretty much cover everything that's going to be in this time around uh, for the patch notes. First, we have Seasons 2.0. Seasonal modifiers, looks like they revised all modifier descriptions. Uh, satellite coding modifier, updated description for satellite coding. Reduced rifle and marksman rifle per bullet damage scaling against uh, satellite coded enemies from 10 to 2. From 10 times to 2 times. The damage from the wrong zone was increased from 10% to 40. Hostile countermeasures, hostile countermeasures can now be found on legendary difficulty. More enemy types are now equipped with hostile countermeasures. Also, countermeasures apply a chance are now scaling with the world difficulty as follows. So you have normal, hard, challenging, heroic, and legendary. So it goes up to 20, 40, 60, 80, and 95. Black Tusk Assault and Throw are no longer eligible for satellite coding. Or satellite coding. I can't remember how it's pronounced. Um, they will not have their, let's see, either the master or non recoil modifiers instead. Reducing the likelihood of enemies having satellite coding modifier on higher difficulty levels such as heroic. The cooldown values of active modifiers now have the same cooldown of value of 55 seconds. Then now we have priority objectives implemented the abandon feature. Remove settlement blockade as an activity type objective. So that's kind of weird. Maybe that's going to be, I thought that was always an activity. Does that mean it's completely gone now? Uh, added Jefferson Plaza as a main mission type objective to the Washington DC pool. Then we have the new gear, which we're already familiar with the stuff already, but this is, like I said, phase two. You have one piece, two piece, and three. So you have swap speed, optal range, and weapon damage. And the empty name, backpack, vigil, talent, perfect, versatile. It applies total weapon damage for 10 seconds when swapping between your primary and secondary weapons if they are different. So you have, oh, this is for PvP as well. 45% to enemies within 15 meters for shotguns and SMGs. For PvP, it's 35% within 15 meters. 45 with marks and rifles and rifles for 25 meters. For PvP is 35. 20% enemies between 15 meters and 25 meters for LMGs and ARs. At most, once per 5 seconds per weapon type. Name mask scenario, which is the perfect attribute 50% optimal range. The Retractor Oso gear set, or how you pronounce that. So you have weapon handling, magazine size, and weapon damage. I'm excited about this one. Uh, because I feel like this is just going to be making ARs and LMGs just laser beams. New talent. Symphony. Killing an enemy for the 25 meters will provide 40% weapon damage to shotguns, SMGs, and pistols. 20% damage to ARs and LMGs. 25% bonus armor for 15 seconds. Killing an enemy within 25 meters will provide 40% weapon damage to marksman rifles and rifles. 20% damage to ARs and LMGs. And 30% headshot damage for 15 seconds. Intermittently killing enemies with both ranges will build up stacks at 4 stacks. All bonuses are multiplied by 1.5 and triggered at the same time for 15 seconds. No stacks are required while the bonuses are active. Chest and backpack talents. See the Fortomoso, which is double weapon damage bonuses from Symphony. And Accelerando, which is decreased the number of stacks needed to proc Symphony double buff for, from 4 to 3. The Centurion Scabbard is the exotic holster, which I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, swapping weapons will give falling groups and bonuses one by one in order. PVE, you have 20% rate of fire and 20% weapon damage. And then magazine size, 50% and 50% reload speed. The bonuses remain active for 12 seconds or until next weapon swap. Swapping to your side will not trigger the next group and bonuses. So we have PVP, which is what I was curious about. Which I figured, yeah, it's going to be 10% rate of fire and 10% weapon damage. And magazine and reload have been... Um, magazine's been decreased to 25%. And reload speed is still the same. Let's see, the bonus remained active for 10 seconds or until the next weapon swap. So instead of 12, it's 10. Swapping your sidearm no longer trigger the next group of bonuses. Now this is going to be for the Strega Exotic Weapon and Talents, which is the exotic weapon, which was the FAL. Killing enemy apply a mark on enemy of within 10 meters of it. Multiple marks can be applied to the same enemy. Deal 15% even applied damage per mark to marked enemies. This gun was absolutely nuts, by the way. If you guys have not messed with it in the PTS or seen videos on it. This thing is pretty sweet. You have plus 20 rounds for the magazine, crit chance and crit damage on the muzzle and optics, and 10% weapon handling. Rework. So we have a few things that have been reworked here. Looks like Sledgehammer, Mosquito, the exotic pistol. Let's see, dealing damage to the grenade applies a mark on target. Targets with marks will take 15%, quote, 20% more damage to armor that have a negative 20% movement speed. Mark disappears after 20 or after 10 seconds. 
In TU-21, dealing damage to the grenade applies a mark on target. Targets with marks will, will take 30% more damage to armor and have a negative 20% movement speed mark. Disappears after 10 seconds. So you can see here now that that's been uh, changed. And Mosquito, the exotic pistol. Hitting an enemy applies a stack. Stacks are shared between players at 5 stacks. The enemy will forcefully target the last player to apply a stack for 5 seconds and take 25% more damage to armor. Stacks complete every 5 seconds. Activating the effect on an enemy will remove all stacks from other enemies. In TU-21, hitting an enemy applies a stack. Stacks are shared between players at 10 stacks. The enemy will forcefully target the last player and apply a stack of, for 5 seconds. Stacks are depleted every 5 seconds, activating the effect on enemy will remove all stacks from other enemies. So that's the rework for that. Balancing. Now we're going to be getting into the rifles for the TU-22 PTS, which these have been adjusted for after Phase 1. So you guys can take a look at these now. You have the ACR-1886, UIC, pretty much all the main ones. And you can see the level 40 damage as well which I'm very excited to use the LVAC especially and things like the lightweight M4 because the rate of fire are way quicker. So now we have them at full auto, but that is going to be the damage and reload speed in the TU-22 update. This is currently TU-21, so this is going to be the TU-22. There's rifles. So you can also see right here as well, the 1886 has been adjusted after phase one, so that one has been changed. And then marks and rifles, the SR1, M700, SRS, and 308. Those have been adjusted, so you guys can take a look at those. Which, I'm not sure if I'll be using these a lot, but since they have buffed a few, I probably will pick up a few of them. Oh, so we have some shotguns. The double barrel sawed off SASG, Super 90 Spaz, and KSG have been updated. So this is going to be for TU-22. Let's look at the KSG, which is my favorite shotgun in the game to this day. Besides the Super 90, which the Super 90 I think everyone uses, but for pump shotguns, the KSG is pretty sweet. So I'll be using that one. So it looks like the reload speed has been altered. Then we have the Harvest, which has been adjusted. SMGs have been adjusted. At the following SMGs, which is the MP7. So the reload speed and awful range. And then weapon mods. So the Infantry 556 mag. Is now 30% or was 30%. Optimal range is going to be 70, and the tactical short grip is now 15% critical of damage. Wow! So that's going to be pretty cool. Then we have gear talents obliterate critical hit increase total weapon damage by 1% for five uh, seconds. Stacks up to 20 times. In TU21, critical hits increase total da weapon damage by 1% for five seconds. Stacks up to 25 times. So that has been reworked. Then we have Weapon Talents Perfect Allegro, which is now 15% rate of fire instead of 12. Sadist PVE applies weapon damage by 30%, uh, quotation 35% to bleeding enemies after 4 kills. 3 kills, quotation 3 kills, applies bleed to the next enemy hit you hit. For PvP, it's 20%, usually 25 was there, to bleeding enemies after 4 kills, apply bleed to the next enemy you hit. And you can see right here, this is TU-21, amplifies weapon damage by 20%, 25% to bleeding enemies after 4, uh, which is 3 kills, applies bleed next enemy you hit. The Brazen for PvE and PvP, receive 3.5% amplified damage to the next shot with a weapon for each pellet that hits the target. If more, there are 6 quotations, 4 pellets hit. Then you have PvP, receive 2%, amplified damage to the next shot with a weapon each pellet that hits the target. If more, than 6 Oh, it's hit. And you can see the re this is the uh, T21. Gear sets, Heartbreaker, which I know a lot of guys are excited about. Four piece. Headshots apply pulls, five seconds, weapon hits on pulse enemy, and refresh a second of 1% bonus armor, and 1.1% damage to pulse enemies for five seconds. Max stack is 50, and you can see here originally it was 1%, so now it's 1.1. Aces and eights, which was originally. Um, Marks and rifle damage. No, now it appears to be marks and rifle and rifle damage. That's sweet. So the striker battle gear increased total weapon damage gained for a stack from striker scramble from 0.65% to 0.9%. So now CNT 20 increases weapon damage striker scramble from 0.65% to 1%. And the following branches have been adjusted after phase one. You can see Alps, Electric, Empress, Murakami, Wyvern, which I am curious to see exactly. Um, so outs we have right here, 
which is 18% repair skill. Uh, let's see, electric. Electric doesn't seem to be really changed at all. So, incoming repairs are 511. Wyvern got a 45% skill duration for the three piece. Okay. Providence defense. Let's see what Providence. Man, Providence got hit hard. So, I doubt a lot of people are going to be using. Even Seska and Sombra all got hit pretty hard for a crit. For weapon damage, Y'all Gear got a buff for 10%. So that's, those are the ones that got hit pretty hard. Man, Sokolov did too. Golan, Seska, Empress. Yeah, Empress got a skill efficiency change. Now the main one a lot of you guys are excited about. I know some people were mad about this, which is going to be the Scorpio. So you have 2, 4, 6, and 9, which it was originally 1, 3, 6, and 7. So the shock for PvP. These are PvP, by the way. I know some people were wondering. Um, you can see the PvP difference here. And you can see in TU-21, these are what you're receiving now. And this is going to be in TU-22. St. Elmo's Engine, Optics 15% critical damage, Mag 30%, or 30 rounds, not 30%, Muzzle 15% critical to chance, Underbarrel 10% weapon handling. And you can see this got changed because it was 20. Uh, the mag, the rounds, uh, and the muzzle, the muzzle's now 15%, um, which you can see that right there. And the weapon handling is now 10 you can see that right here as well for the exotics. So I have a feeling a lot of people will probably be using the EB again. And possibly maybe using the Chameleon again. Because the Chameleon has pretty good attachments still. And they did buff the damage a little bit. There's a few more if you guys want to take a look at those. And you can see note previous negative 10 rounds were reverted for St. Elmo's Engine and Ouroboros. So that has been uh, changed. So the Ouroboros still has the uh, capacity. But overall, that is going to be it for Phase 2 for the PTS Patch Notes. I know this video was a little long. I appreciate all the support. I know you guys still sticking around and watching. But as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.